Hi, this is Dagan Brock, and today I'm going to spend five minutes taking a look at TerraScan, and I'm just looking at the open source offering, though I'll talk a bit about the paid features. TerraScan is a static code analysis tool by a company called Accurix, and it can scan your infrastructure's code, such as Terraform, uh, Kubernetes, CloudFormation, and it comes with a bunch of pre-made policies for you to use out of the box. Plus, there's a commercial offering with some pre-baked compliance templates, support, and other features that I won't really be discussing in this short video. If we look at the quick start page, there are some instructions here to get us running quickly, so that's basically what I'll do. I'm going to download and install this into my home directory. Now we see it's installed, so I'll make an alias in my session just to pretend it's installed system-wide for our tests. I'm just setting this up temporarily for the demonstration, so don't take this as the proper method. Always use common sense when thinking about how you intend to install software on the systems you're working on. Let's take a look at a Terraform project with Terrascan. I'm going to open this main.tf file in a text editor just so we can get some context about what we're scanning. What I've got here is a simple single instance running GitLab web server and database server. And there's an S3 bucket for writing nightly backups of the database from that instance. We can see the bucket is set with private ACLs and uses KMS, um, relatively secure, but nothing too fancy. So let's just try TerraScan and see what happens. We do that by typing TerraScan scan. We have three findings, and looking at the bottom, we can even see that there are two high severity and one medium, which is nice. The first one is complaining that I haven't locked the bucket down to specific users. This is my own personal account where I'd be the only user, so I'd rate this more of a medium here since I have other protections around the account. But you know, I think I'll remediate this anyway because it is good practice. The second one is telling me that I haven't put S3 versioning on the bucket, which remember, this bucket gets nightly backups and those are all uniquely named. Um, so I really don't want versioning in this case. I know it could still prevent people from accidentally deleting my backups, but you know, for the sake of argument, let's say I really intended not to turn on versioning here, which is true. And the last one is a medium finding that states uh, we haven't restricted the instance from potentially using the old instance metadata services which I won't be using those, but okay, still good to note this. So how do I put in an exception for this repository? If I want to say that this resource doesn't get versioning, or maybe in fact I want this to alert if someone even tries to put versioning on, because maybe it's a bucket that has lots of files overwritten and I'd incur some unnecessary cost if we turn on versioning. So the short answer is that you can't put in an exception from what I can tell. First, I want to mention that the first time I ran this scan just now, TerraScan pulled a bunch of template files into my um, home directory, into that package subdirectory. Let's take a look at these rules in the repository because it's a bit easier to click around the files in the browser. Inside the package policies OPA Rego directory here, we see AWS, click on that. Let's find our S3 rules. And looking back at that finding, it was rule 370. This JSON file for rule 370 is defining the metadata about our rule, like its high severity and the category of I am. And the actual rule matching is done here in this file S3 versioning Rego, which is in the Rego language, inspired by Datalog, another old query language. So. Let's look at the rule for S3 versioning. You can roughly see here that it's looking at the configuration of our bucket resource to check the state of the versioning enabled flag. To be completely blunt, this comes across as fairly verbose and over elaborate for checking a Boolean flag. I understand that rules languages can have obscure syntax, but it's not even that. We're talking about 15 lines of code just to check if something is on or off. So, you know, tell me I'm wrong. So how do we put an exception here for 
our bucket. Surely other people must want to do this. A quick Google search shows me that there is an open issue from October of 2020 where this has been requested. And the initial response is a workaround that will allow you to scan with your own custom sets of rules by passing in a specific flag. However, to do that, you need to provide a copy of the entire rules directory with all the JSON and Rego files, minus whatever policies you don't want, or perhaps adding your custom rules files if you're brave enough to write your own. And there's no built-in way to apply your custom rules on top of the defaults or have custom exceptions. Um, and this is also confirmed by their own official documentation. Okay, that's a big red flag for me. The combination of the Rego syntax difficulty and then the clunkiness in coming up with custom rule sets is already turning me off. However, it mentions they do support custom policies for enterprise. What? That doesn't even make sense, but moving on. I could be missing something because I've just barely tried this thing, but let's take a quick look at another bullet point from the homepage just out of curiosity before I wrap this up. It says it can also scan cloud formation among other things. So let's go to a simple single web server instance. Now I'll try TerraScan scan. You can see it's defaulting to Terraform. And we don't have that here, so let's find out how to scan other code. Nothing at the top level. Let's look at um, let's look at the specific language support, and it looks like you can pass in dash i and the language type. So we'll try i and CloudFormation. Okay, not CloudFormation. Maybe they are using a sneaky abbreviation. No. Oh wait. CloudFormation is a paid feature that I can get for only $950 a month. Wow, okay. Let's go to the results for my conclusions. Would I run this locally as a sanity check or smoke test for my own existing Terraform? Sure, it's neat, I guess, and there's no harm in seeing what it says. Would I use this tool to generate events for a seam in combination with some filtering downstream there to potentially generate notifications? Um, maybe? I mean, if somebody told me I had to. Uh, and would I use this in my CI-CD pipeline as a pass-fail step? No way. The odd project layout for adding and removing rules is not great. And even once that gets addressed, I'm not feeling confident about the rule syntax, and it's not the fear of the language at all. I'm positive I would have no problem becoming a Rego expert in little time. It's just that I want to spend my time writing infrastructure as code, not maintaining a code base of a fairly niche rules language. Look, of course I can't tell you much after using this product for about five minutes, but it clearly seems that it's intended for the enterprise audience where you'd get a subscription and be able to stamp that certification that says, I'm doing this level of compliance over my code. Um, so maybe it's great for them, but I'm not going to <laughs> explore it any further right now. I'm Dagan Brock, and this was five minutes or so with Terrascan. <laughs>